Alright guys, welcome to the fourth and final part of my lucky number 7 buoy build. In this video, we're going to be finishing out the handle and performance testing the blade once it's 100% complete, just to see how it holds up. I haven't seen anyone on YouTube chop through a 2x4 with a takedown knife after it's been completely finished and assembled, so this should be interesting. As we're getting started here, I'd like to once again thank the Royer family for putting together such a good takedown buoy course. The videos were a pleasure to watch, and the level of detail was astounding. If you're serious about making some takedown knives, I'd highly suggest checking them out. I also want to give a shout out to Oleg from Knifewood.com for this awesome handle block. He sent me a batch of these blocks, so y'all will be seeing more of his stable wood in future videos. So while I was going through the intro, y'all saw me getting this block parallel to the Ricasso. This is a necessary step so that we can lay out some clean target grind lines in the block and start the shaping process. Once I have the handle profile to about 90% complete, I start with my contouring. To do this, I'm using the 2 inch wheel on my 2x72, just like Mr. Kyle Royer does. On my full tang knives, I've found that the 8 inch contact wheel works really good for coke bottling, however with a buoy like this one, the palm swell is more dramatic, and a 2 inch wheel lets you get more aggressive with the shaping. With the handle rough shaped on the grinder, I can use it as a guide to mark my front spacer, then rough cut the bulk material with my bandsaw and grind down to my scribed lines on the grinder. I then marked about 40 thousandths of an inch around the front spacer with a set of calipers to achieve a museum fit where the handle is proud of the spacer. Just like the front spacer, I used the handle as a guide to mark out the bulk of the material to cut away on the pommel. I tilted my work rest to around 10 degrees to match the angle of the handle wood. This makes for a really nice transition between the wood and the pommel. Note that we're also targeting a museum fit on the pommel where the handle wood will be proud of the pommel by around 30 to 40 thousandths of an inch. I noticed here that my pommel was a little crooked, so I decided to make another one. I didn't realize to the very end, but this didn't really fix the issue completely. With that being said, I guess it doesn't hurt to get some more practice making pommels. With the pommel roughed in, I created a template for my guard and used it to scribe some target grind lines onto the bronze. Thank you. 
Once I was done on the grinder, I brought the guard up to a 1000 grit hand sanded finish on the flats and buffed the edges. All that's left to do here is some hand sanding, bull nosing, buffing, final blade hand sanding to 600 grit, and sharpening. All right, so there she is, ready for testing. Kind of hurts a little bit to test a knife that you just finished uh, getting all nice and clean, but this is necessary. As y'all saw during the second video, I milled my shoulders in the guard just a little too far, and I figured it'd be good to test a takedown knife like this before ever thinking of selling it. So I'm gonna test it. I gotta say, I was pretty nervous testing this knife. When you spend a couple of months making a piece like this one, you can get the tendency to be hyper protective of it. But my curiosity won out in the end, so here we are. So our knife survived the test. What we were really testing there was the handle construction of my first takedown buoy. This is the first knife that I actually built that I won't be putting epoxy in the handle, or at least first hidden tang knife that is. And I just wanted to make sure that it could survive some pretty tough testing, or at least some good shock waves going through the handle. This is also the first time I bedded a handle, so I just wanted to make sure it didn't blow apart. It did a very good job at surviving that test. I did notice a little bit of bronze came off on the inside of the front spacer, but I cleaned that up with some sandpaper and it's in perfectly good shape from this point. There's nothing I can really do about that. That's just the nature of a softer material like bronze. I'm gonna be sending this knife out to Jason at Diomedes Industries to make a sheath for it. He's a professional sheath maker and does amazing work. I have some projects coming up due in October, uh, specifically that fantasy challenge that I wanna get started on now and I really don't have time to make a sheath for this knife. So I do wanna sell this knife and uh, he's gonna make an awesome sheath for it and then we'll sell the whole package. A Couple things I wanna note while we're here that there are of course some critiques that I have. I always have a few critiques on the blade. Before I say anything though, this is probably the best hidden tang knife I've made to date. So I am very proud of this knife but I always wanna point out the flaws especially if anyone's interested in buying this knife. I want them to know what they're getting. The first flaw that I notice here is on the guard fit. And as y'all know from video two and three, this knife fought me the entire way during the guard fitting process. The sides look really good, but just note that on the top and the bottom of the Ricasso, there are some very slight shadows slash gaps on the top and bottom of the Ricasso. So just know what you're getting into from that regard if you're gonna be buying this knife. Also, some things that I don't like just from an aesthetic standpoint, I wish my guard was a little narrower. I probably will make a narrower guard in the future. Uh, it's, it's a little wide in my, in my view. Some people like that, but I feel like it could be narrower. And if you look at the back, there is something that is slightly off on the pommel nut. I don't know if I can get the show up here, but the pommel nut ever so slightly doesn't seem centered, or at least I think the pommel nut is actually centered, but the pommel itself in the back of the handle is not centered with the edge completely. So you can see there's probably 20 or 25 thousandths or so uh, out there on the back. So that's one thing I didn't like. I didn't notice it to the very end and I frankly don't feel like going back and trying to fix it. But all in all, I think this guy turned out pretty good. It feels great in the hand. Uh, the edge is nice and sharp and it's obviously a performer. So with that, I'm gonna send this guy off to Jason 
and we'll see what he turns up with in a few seconds. Well, it's been about a week and a half now, and Jason has gotten me this awesome sheath for this knife. Check out the tool in there. This is just top tier work. The fit and finish of this sheath is phenomenal. It took multiple layers to space out the wedge there so that the guard will fit nicely with the belt loop. But man, check this thing out. This is just a, just a beautiful sheath. I love the different layers here. I don't know what you would call this, the chevrons at the top and the bottom. Uh, really set off the tooling in the middle. The edges are finished beautifully. So yes, he has made a wonderful sheath for this knife. If you're looking to get a sheath for a custom knife, uh, give Jason a call. I'll put his, his contact information on the screen here. He does amazing work. So this is the entire package. This guy comes out of here by just popping off this retaining strap and then just pulls this blade out like that. So there you go. This is the finished package. I will be putting this package on my new website. Uh, I started a website just to uh, share some of my previous projects in the gallery section, but also sell some knives on there because every once in a while I have a knife to sell. So I'll be putting this on there. I'll also be putting a, another smaller everyday carry knife that y'all may remember from the first knife back, or it's actually the first knife I made in this temp shop, or what I'm calling a temp shop, which will end up being a multi-year shop probably, but that is also gonna be for sale and it also has a simple pouch sheath from Diomedes Industries, or Diomedes Industries, that's Jason. So both of those will be on the website. I hope you all really enjoyed this build, maybe you got something out of it. If you did, hit that like button down below. Consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.